Hi, this is Rachel with Good Behavior Beginnings, and today I wanted to talk about comparing Blossom and Root fourth grade language arts curriculum versus Brave Writer, both dart and arrow um, language arts units. So we are fourth grade this year. Um, we used uh, Moving Beyond the Page last year and had a couple that we finished out, but primarily this year for language arts, we have been using Blossom and Root fourth grade full curriculum, which comes with science, separate topic um, for language arts, uh, Blossom and Root, and um, some of the units from brave writer um, that they have language arts units. Um, the ones that we selected were ones that were from uh, 2020 uh, year. I think they have like a year subscription, but you can also go in and buy each unit um, separately when it becomes available. So we got, I think, five or six um, from the DART uh, and one from Arrow because it was the sequel to a book that we had already read. Um, so we were going to read the sequel anyway and figured we'd test out Arrow. I think that Arrow is designed or, or they suggested um, in Brave Writer that Arrow is for like middle school aged, um, but we didn't find it too hard for fourth grade. All right, so let's dive into it. Uh, first, I'm going to start talking about Blossom and Root. I'm going to look at my notes so I don't forget anything. Um, so Blossom and Root is a digital download. Um, you buy it and then you get to download it online. Um, so then you're printing what you want to print, um, all of it, parts of it, whatever. Um, I have this year only printed parts as we got to them because we were doing um, multiple language arts. We weren't we still aren't necessarily going to get through everything for the full year. Um, so I'm just printing the parts that we need as we go. Um, it has a, a parent guide and then it has a student notebook. Um, the student notebook in fourth grade is a lot more detailed. Um, instead of just like one or two pages that they would write on, the student notebook um, is the bulk of it because fourth grade, it starts moving into independent work. So it gives you a couple of options as to how you want to run it, whether it's adult led or a blend or learner independent, um, but it is set up where you can uh, give the learner the notebook, uh, the student notebook, and they can read what they're supposed to read. And then they can go through the activities um, for each day or each week. Um, so we have been doing it um, mostly independent. We've actually done one section <laughs> from Blossom and Root so far because we did a lot of the Brave Writer ones. Um, but I really liked how it was laid out and the rest of our semester is probably going to be blossom and root. Um, but so the way that it is done is that you read a certain amount for that week and then it has um, assignments or, or activities um, that you do that the learner does. Um, approximately books are scheduled across four weeks and that there's, I think, six or seven activities per week. So the idea with Blossom and Root is that you would be doing language arts multiple days per week. It says like three to four days um, across the week is what you would be doing um, with your language arts time. Um, so then you do a couple of those activities each day. Um, there's ones that are vocabulary and ones that are writing. There are multiple writing prompts in a week. So often there's one that's a, um, at the beginning, something to kind of introduce the concept uh, for that week. Like, tell me about a hero because we're going to be learning about heroes or whatever. Um, and then there's a, a summary so that you um, write about your favorite part and summarize your favorite part from the reading. Um, there's also using the vocabulary words is another writing prompt, um, but there's a lot of freedom with that. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of activities. It's designed to do um, multiple days per week of language arts. Um, 
I found that the books that they have listed um, look great, right on par for fourth grade. Um, it's laid out well. The student notebook is laid out well, where you have little check boxes. So um, I highlighted what I wanted my learner to do, and then they picked which ones they were going to do that day. Um, and we kind of worked through it like that. Um, there is some discussion, and if you were to do it as a, uh, a adult-led uh, language arts as opposed to an independent, there would be more discussion. Um, but even within the um, independent one, there's little pieces that you guys cover together. Um, but there's also a lot of writing product so that you can go back and look and see if they can demonstrate that skill on paper. Um, so that is Blossom and Root, fourth grade. I really like it. Um, I, uh, like I said, I think we're going to be using the rest of our semester um, doing more from Blossom and Root. So Brave Writer, I am not familiar with anything else from Brave Writer. So I only know the language arts units and looked at these and I liked the books that they had and I liked that they were just little units. So um, we got, like I said, uh, probably five from DART, which is like upper elementary age geared and then one from Arrow, which I think is sort of like middle school age. Um, geared towards middle school age. They are also a digital download. So you buy them online, you download the packet. Um, they say about four weeks for each book also. Um, and you can do them in any sequence. Uh, they're, they're meant to stand alone by themselves. Um, we When we looked at it, it looks like it's really geared towards just doing language arts one day a week. Um, so when it says four weeks, if you're only doing language arts one day a week, yeah, it'll take you four weeks. If you do language arts more than one day a week, which is what we did, we went through it a lot faster than that. Um, I would say week and a half um, per book, as long as we were reading the book, right? Um, obviously, we'd slow it down if we didn't read through the book that fast. Um, Brave Writer says, at least for the DART ones, that the um, they are designed to be read aloud. Um, so these would be great if you're doing all read alouds or if you have a lot of a lot of kids, I guess, um, other people listening to. So it's like the group read along um, book. Um, I don't, I have one learner. Um, so we sort of trade it off. Some we would do uh, read together and some my learner would read on their own. Um, it's mostly discussion. So there's not a lot of like written product. There is writing, there's um, a copy work or dictation, or they call it like French dictation or reverse dictation. I think those are the four styles that they have. Um, and it definitely practices um, you be the learner being able to copy or write what the um, sample text is and using things like, um, you know, apostrophes and quotation marks and uh, attribution tags and things like that. So um, it is very consistent in it'll introduce certain uh, writing concepts or uh, grammar pieces or um, spelling type things. And then that will be what you are doing the copy work or the dictation on. Um, but outside of that, the rest of it is pretty much discussion. Um, it does have um, some more like activities, sort of hands-on activities that you could do. And it has like a, a tea party or a, a party that you can plan at the end of the book. So for people that do like, we, we all read the book and then we're gonna do something fancy about it. We're gonna have like a tea party or a book party or whatever at the end. It gives tons of ideas for that. We didn't do that piece. <laughs> we didn't do like the book parties, the tea parties or anything like that. Um, so I think that's where maybe, you know, that makes it um, maybe come more alive for some people. Again, that hands-on component um, that it seems to uh, focus on a lot more of the uh, discussion and the hands-on and then a little bit of the writing. Um, like I said, we found that we went through it 
faster than four weeks for a book because we do language arts more than one day a week. Um, but the uh, things that were being introduced, um, how to write and how to use apostrophes and contractions and quotation marks and all of that stuff seemed um, seemed like a good level uh, for upper elementary. Um, I think one thing that I noticed is that if you do several of them in a row, because they can each be a standalone unit, there's sometimes some repetition. Um, so we found that sometimes we were covering the same thing that we already had covered, which is fine, except if we had already kind of mastered it, then covering it again, it went into a lot more detail than more of like a review. So then we just kind of treated it like a review and did that. But like I said, I think that's just you know, my learner and, and where they were and how we paced it. Um, but again, great books, um, a lot of variety, um, and they can each just be like, they were just units, right? So um, there were a few books, like I said, the one for Arrow, which was uh, listed as like a little bit higher reading level, um, was the sequel to a book that we had read together um, the year before. So we're like, well, I know how that one went. It was actually quite an easy read. Um, so we're going to go ahead, we'll get the sequel, and we'll get that unit from it. Um, so it was nice that we could just have books, right? And say, okay, here's four books. Which one do you want to read? And let my learner pick. And then we could go based upon those interests. So it wasn't... Um, me saying, here's what we're going to read. Uh, this time, uh, there was a lot of choice in it. And that worked really well, especially getting back into the swing of things in the fall. Um, instead of saying, all right, here's what we're starting with. Like, great. What do you want to do for your first book? Which book do you want to read? And so that's kind of how we did like the first semester of this year, right, was I had books that had units from either Brave Writer or Blossom and Root. I let my learner choose which book they wanted, and then we did that unit from there. Um, what I'm going to do for this second semester is a bit more from Blossom and Root and a little bit more of a sequence where it's going to build off each other, but I like both of them. I'll probably continue to go back and look at Brave Writer and see what new units they have um, since the last time I looked and see if there are any books that I would love to cover. Um, and I will probably still continue to use uh, Blossom and Root because I like the independent work practice um, and that there's a little bit more um, writing and product measures. So that was Blossom and Root versus Brave Writer for their language arts components. Let me know if you have tried either one, uh, what you think, what you like, or um, if there are pieces that I missed from there that, um, uh, that should be included when we're comparing the two. Thank you so much.